from reading our physics textbooks, we can understand stuff about capacitors and you know the, the basic facts, like capacitors are devices that store charge or hold potential. But what does that really mean? How do capacitors do that? And so, if we understand what happens in a capacitor at a microscopic level, it becomes a lot easier to approach problems we've never seen before because we have that intuition of what's going on. So if we had a simple circuit with a battery with a positive and negative terminal, and this is hooked up to a capacitor, which is notated as two parallel plates, then let's think about what, what really goes on. How does this capacitor store the charge? Well, we know with the battery that electrons are going to flow from the negative terminal. Whoops. Electrons are going to flow from the negative terminal. So they're going to come down and they're going to reach this plate and because there's a vacuum in between the electrons can't jump and teleport from plate to plate. So the key thing to understand here is that no charge flows ever even when the capacitor is charging between this gap in between the, the plates. So electrons come in and they stack up on this plate here because they're attracted to the positive terminal. You know, if they, if they could, they would want to get here, which is pretty simple. And so what happens is the capacitor plates, because they're initially uncharged, it doesn't mean that they don't have any electrons or protons. It just means that because it has no net charge, that they have an equal amount. So because that these electrons are being stacked up here, the positive terminal here is also going to be pulling electrons off here. So the electrons are going to be pulled off this plate while they stack up on this plate. So the electrons are going to be pulled off and they're going to attract towards the positive terminal. And this is, this is really just a pretty simple circuit. It's going from the negative side, it's stacking up on here, and because they're going to be constantly pulled off of this plate here, because they're getting pulled off, we would expect to see a surplus in protons. So over time, because we keep pulling electrons off, protons will gain a positive net charge. So over time, because we keep pulling the electrons off and because electrons keep stacking, this causes our potential difference. And you might be wondering, well, what happens if we run out of electrons? Like, if we keep pulling electrons off the protons, I mean, eventually, wouldn't we run out? And, and that is possible. However, if you do the math, you realize that, you know, there's so many trillions and trillions of electrons that it just, it never happens. And if it did happen, the attractive forces between these capacitors would be so strong, it would, like, literally rip through space-time and attract itself to the other plate. So we don't really have to worry about that. We know that we can literally, you know, for our approximate say we could keep pulling electrons off this plate. So eventually we end up with a very strong potential difference. So what happens? Well if we keep trying to put electrons on here then the electrons that are already here, because electrons will repel other electrons, these electrons won't let another electron through. So we would try to bring another electron through. You know this terminal is going to shoot an electron through here, and, but because we have so many here, it's going to reject it and pull it back. So we end up with this equilibrium over time. And this is what happens when the capacitor gets fully charged. And so what about the other side, the protons? Well, if we keep pulling electrons off, like if we try and pull another electron off, then the attractive force between all of these protons and all of these electrons is so strong that the attractive force for the positive terminal is too weak. So eventually, an electron can't be pulled towards the positive terminal and it can't be pulled off of the plate. And so this equilibrium occurs when the capacitor gets fully charged. So it does take time for a capacitor to charge and that is when we keep putting electrons on and we keep pulling electrons off the other. And so this is really what happens on the microscopic level. So there's a few interesting things about the, the capacitors and one of them is pretty tricky. It's the capacitors that turn into a parallel. Like if you have a capacitor in series and you have a switch that goes to another capacitor, then the circuit becomes parallel. So what happens there is, if we have a circuit, simple circuit, oops, and it's going to be attached to another circuit with another capacitor.
So imagine we have a capacitor hooked up in series here, and we originally have a switch that is not yet connected. So the switch is open. If we close the switch, all of a sudden here we could go across and we could get into this side. But for now, the switch is open, and so no electrons will flow from this side to this side. So if we initially connect a power supply, so if we initially have, say, a positive terminal and a negative terminal, positive and negative, and we power up this capacitor, so we're trying to charge it, then we know from before that we're going to have electrons flow through this wire all the way over here, and they're going to stack up on this plate. At the same time, we're going to be pulling electrons off of here. The electron is going to be going towards the positive terminal, so then we end up with an excess of protons. And so this would be a series circuit. So then if we charge this completely, and then we disconnect it, then the capacitor remains charged. So let me redraw this, as if we're disconnecting the power supply. So now we have a circuit with a capacitor that's charged, and at the same time, let's connect, let's close the switch and open up into this next one. So this is going to be capacitor 1, and this will be capacitor 2. Now suddenly, this circuit becomes a parallel circuit because we've added this extra capacitor. But it still appears at first sight to be like a series circuit. So what is going to happen here? The best way I think of looking at this is imagine you're at a grocery store. So when you're at the grocery store and you go up to the cash register, so we, let's say we have a cash register 1, 2, and 3. And the cash registers are going really slow, and let's say that you have a ton of people ahead of you, and this is you right here. So your goal is to get outside of the grocery store in a reasonable amount of time, and because there's so many people ahead of you, you're really impatient, so you really want to go there. You, could, you can compare your impatience to your voltage potential. And so if there's only one register open, then there's only one possible pathway. But then what happens suddenly if the other cash register opens? So now we have a second cash register, and all of these people are going to go over to that register. And so what happens is you're not going to have everybody move to the register 2. You're going to have half of the people move to register 2 because now you have two different pathways to leave the grocery store. You can go through register 1, or you can go through register 2. So what happens here is because we have the, this, and this is the most important part, is because we have the uh, electrons and they're trying to get across this gap here, this capacitor gap, they have two options. They can try and get across in this side, or if the electron were to travel across down over on this side, it could stack up on here. And so if there's less electrons here, it's like going to the grocery store and saying, well, there's less people at this other register, so let's go over there. So now the electrons have two options. If you were to somehow magically teleport an electron right here, it could either go down this path or it could go down the other path. And since it has an alternate path, then that circuit becomes a parallel circuit. Same thing goes for the protons. If you were to put a proton here, it could say, well, I could go over here, but there's already four protons, and they're going to be repulsive. So it's going to push this proton all the way over to the other side. So it's going to go down this side of the wire and stack up on this side. And so this is like the this capacitor here essentially acts as a battery, almost as a kind of a power source to this capacitor. And some of the electrons will rebalance themselves so that there's an equal amount on either side. And so this is a really important understanding, like the intuitive understanding of the capacitors. In the next video, I'll go over a few example questions, but first it's it's good to understand what happens on the microscopic level.